In 2020, my grandpa went missing. My abuelo went missing in Osavalo. He was missing for seven months. Um, he one day left his home and he just never came back. Uh, this was at the height of the pandemic, the first wave. It was when a tropical storm, Amanda, had begun. And it was some of the hardest moments my family over here had to deal with, as well as overseas as well. My mum and my two uncles and my grandmother are the people that I live with. And it was some of the most confusing and, and hardest time for them, right? They would try to look for him. And thankfully, through the grace of God and higher powers, we found him, right? But very, very, very early on, something happened. Well, with me. Very early on, I had a thought, right? While my uncles and my mum were sort of trying to deal with this confusion, this hurtful confusion of like, where could he be in the world? Because there was no sign of him anywhere for a very long time. Um, I had the thought, a quick little thought in my head, just a quick one. And the thought went exactly like this. I haven't forgotten. It was, well, it's just your dad. It's not that bad. And immediately... I was like, wow, that's probably the most fucked up thing I've ever said. One of the most, pretty much. Because the implication of like, damn, like, I mean, it's just your dad. Like, who cares, you know? Mine was always missing. I mean, it's whatever. And to this day, I still, I still like cringe at the fact that I even had that thought. After saying that, I felt like a complete piece of shit complete piece of shit that I would say something say something about that to to a family member who's very close to other people in my family who are very who are you know people who who raised me if this was a couple years ago, if it was before 2020 I would have let that feeling linger for a very long time I'd feel like a complete sh uh, you know just a just a loot just an asshole and I would you know, just be sad and be angry at myself. But this time, because I was at a place where I could recognize and sort of catch myself and be like, wait a minute, where the hell does that come from? Where does that instant reaction of saying something like that about someone's father come from? I wanted to find the source of it. But to find the source of it, we have to go to exactly where it all began so this is my daddy issues right here right now So it was, I, I, I think it was third grade. It was either third or fourth grade. I was in class. I was at school and we had this activity. The teacher wanted us to get into groups of about, I think it was about four or five uh, little kids. And they were like, okay, so we're going to go around in the group. And I don't know what the hell this was for. This was like some friend bonding. I don't, it wasn't even part of the subject anyway. So the the activity was the teacher said i want everyone to go in a circle with their group and one by one tell what tell the group what your parents do for work right um so i go in my little group 
you know, there's a battle, there's like four kids around me. If I'm not wrong, maybe five, but that's not an important detail. And, you know, one by one, they all go. And I remember being like, I remember, I remember them saying like, one goes, oh, you know, mine's a, uh, a builder. My other ones, uh, you know, he works at an office, so, you know, it's general stuff. And, you know, and, and like it comes, I'm last, it comes to me. And I go, okay, my mom um, right now stays at home most of the day because, you know, she was looking for work. Um, but, you know, and yeah, that's all I could say about my mom. And then, the, and then, and then I can remember so vividly, they were like, and then I was like, I, I don't know my dad. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a dad. And all the kids were like, what? <laughs> What do you mean you don't have a dad? I mean, you must have a dad. And in in my mind, I'm like, no, I just, I don't know. I, I don't think I have one. Do I have one? Do I? Do I? And then um, the, the activity stops because the teacher comes by. And I think I remember her being like, uh, okay, let's stop. And I'm pretty sure it's because she heard me say that. <laughs> and so, you know school and all that keeps going and i don't know exactly when but it, it was either like a few days or maybe a couple weeks and that thought lingers hey do i have a dad So I'm not sure exactly how long it was between the activity and me asking my mom the dreaded question. I remember going up to her and she was just sitting down and I remember being like, mom, do I have a dad? And I, I asked her so casually, you know, and I just think I didn't think nothing of it because it would to me at the time. It was just like a, you know, a throwaway question. It was just like, ah, it's just a guy I know, right? or a guy I should know or a guy like whatever you know I didn't understand the importance of like a father figure because at that time I was like eight-ish nine around there I remember my mom just like deadpan just stood just like she was sitting but she was like once I asked the question she was even more still than what she was before and that's what threw me off I was like oh because my mom is a very strong woman and there's not much that can really like face her she's just like eh, a lot of, about a lot of things you know but when i asked that it was almost as if it was like <clears throat> she held her breath for a second and i don't know if it was the same night or i don't know if it was like two nights after that i remember walking into my room and my mom's there and she has a photo album and she has this photo album and it's a photo album i've never seen before you know and she's like emilio come sit and i'm like what the fuck this is weird <laughs> she never does this she says come sit and i sit right there right and she's like she flips through the thing and i'm starting to notice this man who's very dark he's got a whole head of hair almost like a elvis presley type of cut you know but yeah with minus the gel it was almost like like it was actually excuse me it was like formed it was like naturally like that way like it was just like puffy and you know he was a dark man and uh he was skinny he you know had a big smile and um i started to notice i was like huh i kind of look like this dude <laughs> and my mom just uh, says to me right there and there and she tells me Emilio, this is your dad. And then it clicked to me. Because there are photos where he's holding me as a baby, as a as a little kid. I was just like Oh. Oh. <laughs> it suddenly it suddenly dawned on me that you know, I was different. My life was different to every other kids in that little group. And maybe, you know, some of those other kids in other groups uh, didn't have a dad either. But in my group, it was like everyone else had one, but I didn't. Yeah. The photo album really opened everything. What's the next thing I got here? Right. Meeting him for the first time. (laughs) 
I would get allergy shots because I was allergic to a lot of things as a kid. And I would get allergy shots at um, at a at a a suburb that wasn't really close to my house. We had to take a train there every Thursday, and I loved the the trip. You know, it, um, every Thursday after school it was just something different to do. And so one day, we usually go to the doctor, come back, go straight to this train station, go home, right? But this time she was like, uh, my mom was like, oh, we're going to the park. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, what the fuck? Cool. And then we, uh, we sit down at this bench, you know, one of those like, uh, picnic benches that, that are on like, you know, the random ones that are parks. We sit down and I'm sitting like this my mom's right here i think i'm i'm a good nine years old at this point and right in front of me like there's a whole park right and i can see everything then right in front of me from the corner someone comes closer and closer and closer and it was almost as if seeing like 2d animation turn into 3d animation because it was like wait I've seen this person before, but only in pictures, only in flat surfaces. And yet this man that I recognize is coming towards me and he sits down. He's, you know, he smiles and we, and he starts to talk and my mom's like, do you know who this is? And I'm like, I think so. <laughs> so it was confirmed that yes, this was in fact my dad. And, um, you know, we just talk about everything school uh what what i like who he is sort of you know and he, you know he's a great joker and he's a great charmer The it ended up with being like do, do you want to like do stuff <laughs> do you want to do stuff like after this maybe we can you know like do something like go out or whatever right go bowling or something and i was like yeah that'd be cool you know that'd be cool because that's that stuff that i never really did before either because we didn't have the means to you know he goes back to i guess he parked somewhere else and we go towards the station which was the opposite direction and as we're walking to the station this just hit me that i, I just remember this happened um i cried i cried and, and and i don't know i don't really remember why i cried i was just like damn i just i just met him you know and it was just like a ton of bricks and it wasn't like, I don't know if I was sad or if I was happy. It was just tears. And then that's when we started to get to know each other. So from the age of nine to about, I want to say, damn, maybe like to like 15 years old. That's when I got my like first girlfriend. So that's when I pretty much like you know i started seeing him a bit less between those times he told me how to play golf or swing a golf swing a, a golf a club we went to bowling we went for a lot of kfc dinners what else did we do we went i uh, had a lot of birthdays with him i was spending almost in the early years almost every weekend at his place where i would see it was an apartment and it was like it was like really high and it was overlooking the Parramatta skyline Parramatta is a suburb in Australia if you're watching this from somewhere else and it was like it was just a different life because in my house it was very simple it was very like low key and there wasn't much to do because you know my parents were working a lot of the time um, my parents and my you know my family my uncles were working at the time a lot so you know you I couldn't really do anything you know and I was an only child so I you know I didn't uh, didn't really have a lot to do growing up other than be at home and then there was the big one was we went on a holiday together we went for we went to go to Queensland for about a weekish and it was one of the you know best times of my life like it was like the first time like I, I went on a roller coaster and he was a really he was he was an adrenaline junkie as well so uh it just went hand in hand you know and it was it was it was that was an experience of like damn like this is what it's like to have like a normal family you know a mom a dad and you in the middle right yeah 
so we got to know each other really well and i remember that holiday being almost like uh the thing that cracked the glass that that destroyed the 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 facade really because at the end of it um at the airport he goes one way and we go the other after like a week of like getting to know each other right and in my mind i was like okay maybe now like my dad can be in my life and you know he can meet my uncles again that's a whole nother story so and you know maybe we can reconcile differences and maybe he can like be like a part of us you know and he walked off and without even looking back right and i remember just watching him being like is he gonna look back like is he gonna say bye for like and just like look you know take that last look and just like go off i remember him walking and him walking off and i, I was with my mom and we, we waited for i guess my uncle to come pick us up and i remember turning away and just bawling crying because i knew that i was never gonna have that again because he walked off because he looked over in the other direction and everything like from knowing that he left me from three years old till nine years old and didn't even <laughs> didn't even try to like look for me and nothing like that it just sort of sort of hit me that everything he did like all that he did i don't know maybe he just wanted to feel good about himself for a bit you know maybe he wanted to feel like he was actually doing something for me instead of something for himself and it just hit me it just hit me it was like yeah you're not my you're not my dad you're just the guy that i just got to know for a little bit from then on our communication got a, a, like less and less and less to the point where now it only comes in two phone calls. Uh, I want to say nine to like around 14, 15 is when, you know, we were really close. And then after that, from 15 to like 18-ish, we saw each other every now and then. It was like maybe max two to three times a year, which is not very, a lot of, you know, a lot of in-person person, person uh, connection or whatever, talking to him. I hardly even saw him anymore when i turned 18 you know you start to do like adult things you start to go to clubs and hang out with your mates and do this and that get a girlfriend you know try and look for girls and you try and do this and try and do that right and then everything else is just sort of shoved in the up in 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 the under the rug almost and my dad me and my dad connecting you know from and it's it really stems from that that queensland trip the end of it where i was just like this guy wasn't here for everything he was wasn't there and he's he's only he was only there for the good times right and and as, as i got older i started to realize like man this guy is fucking ain't shit bro <laughs> you know like damn whatever man so i started to talk to him less and less but but uh from around 18 to now i guess 28 uh i started to we started to like it was just two calls one on my birthday one on christmas they go pretty much the same way the same way every time it's like how you doing uh how's life how's the missus how is your family you know how's uh, uh how's work you know what are you doing your weekend you know how's things like how's clubbing how's this you know oh we should go for a beer we should go for another kfc dinner okay we should go for some golf you know we should go watch a movie you know we should go do this that okay take care 
talk to you soon and then the next time is christmas same thing next time birthday same thing and it's been years of just that 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 again and again and again and he's the only he's the one that always calls he usually calls around 10 but it's never it's never later than 12 25th of december christmas day of 2021 which is not that long ago he calls right on time around 10 ish not 12 ish and um this was after really thinking about having that thought of like what i said about you know my grandfather and how my father's sort of absence birthed this thought because it was like my dad wasn't around for i guess like seven to eight years you know and before the, i mean you can even say nine to ten years because i was one two three i didn't even remember him so it was so it was very i made the um the conclusion that it was very <laughs> very uh obvious that his absence made me think of everyone everyone else it made me think of father figures as like uh as like a something throwaway something you don't really need something that's just like eh, whatever you know and if and i'm not like that i'm not i'm very sensitive to others but yet this one thing this one thing was the thing that that that's not in line with who i am you know and it's his fault it's his fault his fault for for putting that seed in my mind like you know for putting this like thought process in my mind and to to disrespect the man who you know raised my the people who raised me and it rings the phone rings and i'm there thinking whether or not to pick it up and i go to pick it up but in that instance because of my thoughts and because of my my realization I suddenly realize that I have I've always had two options whereas I've always thought I've 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 always been compelled to answer the phone more because it was for him it was for him to feel good because I always picked the phone up reluctantly because I was like oh he's gonna talk shit or you know he might think like this about me and this and that but I was like at that in, in the 25th the last Christmas I was like wait a fucking minute I don't need to do anything for this man. And I watched the phone ring. And it it came apparent to me that if I don't pick up this phone, I have no communication with this guy. And I'm okay with that. I would be okay with him being out of my life for the rest of for the rest of it. I really would. I really will. And I, I saw it ringing, ringing, ringing. And it came apparent to me, it like, it, this was like the longest, like, looking at a phone while, while it's ringing I've ever had in my life. And it came clear to me that if I don't answer this phone, I'll never answer it again because it'd be easier and easier and easier to not to answer it. And in my mind, it would be as if he was dead to me as, you know because i've had a lot of those feelings too i've had that thought of like i only talk to him on my birthday and christmas if he doesn't call me if he doesn't make the call basically he's i i don't know if he's going to if he's dead or alive most of the time i really don't and if i don't answer the call he's basically dead But did I want to accept that? Did I want him to be out of my life? So in those few rings, I went through a complete grieving process of my father's non-existence.
first step denial so denial is all about is trying to deny that you know this is actually happening i remember th feeling like when watching the phone ring and there was a there was a hint of hesitation i would i was saying to myself like nah like he, he was he was all right you know he he at least treated me like a son for the time we were together he at least was like you know he let me into his home and all that at least we went on kfc and at least we watched like lord of the rings every every year on boxing day and all that you know so i was like he told me how to play golf he got me presents he, you know and all these like stuff like denying that he wasn't just there for the good good times you know that's what that's what i would always think when i would like whenever his call came i would always think like we did do this stuff so yeah i'll answer the phone why not i mean it's good just to catch up a little anger he left when he was when i was three years old he left me and my family he was friends with my uncles everyone knew him everyone knew that the just the the community the community my family was involved in knew about like oh you know that's oh that that's that's his son you know and that's their son you know the, you know it, it wasn't it wasn't like a secret you know and i just felt like his actions really made it hard for my mom to get over it because everyone probably reminded her of like oh where's such and such oh this is such and such's son huh he looks just like him that pisses me off that fucking pisses me off another thing that pisses me off is that when he left me right you would think <laughs> there was there was like a, a a good reason or something happened right something did happen he had two other daughters i have two half sisters that i've never met you know i do know who they are i've never met them but after research <laughs> after years of like keeping it in you know i'm gonna say it what the fuck man you go to all their birthday parties you have all their parties and shit you know and and you have all this start all this time with them you have photos with them you know you introduce your family to them and yet i was here for a good nine years your firstborn fucking son and you couldn't show me to anyone i only knew one person and no two people from from my from that side of the family that i didn't even know that were related to me only until i met you and only until you felt compelled because you one day saw me saw me running in a park and my mom just happened to be there and you just happened to be at the same park watching me i know bullshit when i know it man i when i when i see it i know bullshit bro i know it when it's there and i know you just felt compelled to do it because you were caught out and you were at the same place at the same time you know why because I would do that shit too. I guess we're too. Well, I guess we are alike, aren't we? Bargaining. Now that I had that quick thought out of my system, the bargaining comes in. Having the father figure in your life, having your, you know, you see in movies and you see in all this stuff where, you know, you should you should forgive your father and you forgot that you, you know you go through the work to make things uh happen you make things comfortable you know and in my mind i was like okay look i'm i'm 28 now i should be more mature about this i should be more of a man and i should be the bigger man and i should be like look it's just two calls 10 minutes tops right each call so that's 20 minutes of 500,000 500 and 525,600 minutes in a year right it's 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 fine like it's just a call right it's just a call it's just a call like it's just a, a little conversation and you know what like i might go out with you i might let's have a beer let's have a little drink let's do this and do that right let's go let's go out to have let's go watch the new batman let's go fucking watch um what's coming up let's go watch uncharted i don't fucking know let's watch a football game together fuck that'd be amazing 
I actually like football now. I've, like, I really like it, and I actually watch it now. Wow. Fuck's sake, right? Ever since I've met you, there's been one question. One question that I can't bring myself to ask you. One question. And that question is something that's always in the back of my mind whenever we hang out. Whenever. And you know why? Hold up. Next part. Depression. Why did you leave? Was it just so you can... What? Just so you can go to another family? Why did you leave? That is the question that I have... Ever since I've met you, ever since that table... Uh, that conversation at that picnic table on Biggie Park. I've had that one question. And I should have asked you there. I should have asked you at nine years old just so that this could just blow over but it's the thing that has destroyed almost my sanity this entire time why the fuck did you leave why the fuck did you i don't care if you left me why did you leave my mom hmm? why did you leave basically your best friend in my uncle why did you leave all these people that did nothing to you why did you leave a kid <laughs> at three years old if you didn't see me at that park you probably would have never talked to me. Probably. You know, that's fucking sad, bro. What the fuck? You know what you've done to me? Do you understand what you've done to me? You left me with abandonment issues because it was going to happen one day. I was going to find out I had a dad once. That he was floating around in this world doing his own fucking business. That is a question that you should have answered without even me asking from that table it wasn't my it wasn't my job to do that it was yours it's been yours this entire time and you've been you should have been told me exactly exactly why without no no vagueness with all the detail every gross detail that you could have told me you should have fucking told me why and it's bullshit that you didn't because now i'm here dealing with shit in my mind acceptance fuck Seeing my mum and my two uncles struggle to to comprehend that they've lost someone that they love, to accept their death in my grandfather. They they believed that he was dead. They believed that he was gone and they believed that he was he was never meant he was never going to be found. Like, you know, my mum would look at just random El Salvadorian um news and he she would just try and and she would look for and she would watch random El salvadorian vlogs and try and look look in the background and see if he's just fucking walking there i i will never have that for them i will but for you fuck off and that's when i accepted that look i think you're better off dead to me because 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 it's okay it's okay you left. You know why? So that these people that didn't leave. That accepted me. Even though they probably watched me grow up and think, fuck, he looks like his dad. He looks like that he looks like that dickhead. But this is this is my nephew. This is my this is my son. This is my grandson. And even though he see he looks like him, and even though he has the same smile. They're two different people. And we're going to raise this guy right. We're, we're, we're not going to raise a quitter. We're not going to raise someone who runs away from the hard stuff. Or what, what, That's the thing. I don't even know why you fucking left. That's the thing. And you've never admitted it to me. You've never told me. You've never told my mom. The, 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 the biggest thing that we know is that you probably... Um, it was probably because of my half-sisters. And you probably had them. And you were like fuck i gotta do this <laughs> uh wow and so i had one missed call by the end of that i didn't pick up the phone i let it ring out and to this day about a couple months later he has not ring back um he has not made an attempt to be like hey like what's up you know or he doesn't even send me messages even a simple text message doesn't do it and I test and I, I've tested him. I wanted to leave. I wanted to not pick up and see what we do after. And exactly what he's been doing 
this entire time, my entire life is just not talking to me. So you know what? I don't care anymore. To me, our time together is now memories that I don't genuinely treasure. I don't I don't genuinely I don't um hate them. They're just memories, they're just stuff that happened. And you know what? It's okay. It's okay to feel this. I even read a poem about this shit. But I don't know if I should say it because that's not for you you shouldn't be getting any more of me and i'm not going to give any more of me to you to me you are dead because it's better that way i thank you for the time that you've given me i do i do i thank you for the family you've given me i appreciate That you've given me the ability to appreciate the ones who have raised me. The people who did raise me. And the people who are always there for me. Even though I feel like a complete fucking shitbag sometimes. Even though I feel like a complete leech at times. Even though I feel like a complete failure in their eyes. Yet, they're still there. So, nice knowing you. Thank you.